There's nothing in the movie that isn't an extension of what you're seeing right now. So, and that, I think like all the best science fiction is really like that. And you see what's going on now, and you kind of take it to its absurd, you know, limits of of uh, conceivability, and and then it turns out that ten years, twenty years go by, and you find out that it, it wasn't even it wasn't even close. Like the real thing is usually even worse. Gary's a guy who's so committed, so focused, um, and is very intense about his performance, um, intellectually, physically. It was amazing that Terry did what he did for us. I mean, he jumped on a moving car. Um, we don't really like to fake to stuff. Yeah. We don't like to. I mean, you know, it's it's the movie, so you're going to fake stuff. Um, it's kind of the nature of the game. But, I mean, if we can actually get it to happen for real and just point the cameras at it, I mean, it just makes our job so easy. I think it makes it like a more visceral and um, involving experience for an audience, too. There's a warmth about Chris that's amazing, and he's so grounded as a person and that comes through with this character who is kind of fighting the opposition and, you know, the government and castle and control in general. Uh, so he was really the perfect uh, guy for us to be the leader of this group of humans. Well, Castle is like a kid who grew up um, control, you know, he grew up in the world of video games, in the world of, of, of the internet, in a world where you never need to leave your house to be the master of your own world. And he just kind of assumed a level of control about his surroundings that he just took for granted. He thinks he's the only real person in the world. He thinks every other person around is just sort of like entertainment or something useful to him or something amusing to him. He doesn't he, he really isolated. take anybody else seriously. Yeah, he isolated himself so much growing up, and he saw what control did for him and how he got off on it and just wanted to continually take that to another level. We've always wanted to sort of get out of the, the film world, you know, and stop, you know, burning it in with a chemical process. And, and we've been HD guys from when HD came out. Uh, and we love to push those cameras to the limits, and we love what they can do, and we love the look of them. Um, red isn't HD, though. It's red. It's a whole different format. It's its own beast. It's beautiful. It's the most silky image you'll ever see. And when we tested it and saw how small it was and how cool it was, there was no other option but red. In the way that we shoot, we both, you know, you know, camera operate everything and I'll do all of our handheld stuff. We want to put them on a journey. We, we like to, when we, when we film, we like to really stay with a, with a character. Um, we like to do longer takes when we can so that we feel like we're immersing ourselves into that world. Um, but it's a really, it's a cheesy thing to say, but we're very organic about our filmmaking. We like to follow the actor around. We don't like to set marks, you know. It's like, we don't want to like, you know, go hit your mark. We'd rather just kind of follow them around and see what they do. One of the things that we try to do with the weapons in the movie is, um, even though it's a science fiction movie, it's set in the future, we're not dealing with laser guns and, and we, you know, crazy things that, that you couldn't possibly relate to. Um, we all we wanted all of our weapons to feel like something that was really usable, that really worked. Um, and so the new weapons that we created for the movie were all sort of like extensions of things now. Um, and they're all really practical, really usable. A lot of them are real. 